Hi everyone, we're here for another segment of Living in Exile, and we're in the Easter season, so uh, the reflections today will be on uh, living well in exile during the Easter season. Hi everyone, I'm going to be sharing a few reflections on the Easter season today. So we've just celebrated Easter Sunday and this is Easter Tuesday. Let me ask you a question. Uh, what is the evidence that Jesus is truly risen? Because even at the beginning some said that, well, his disciples probably came and just kind of took his body away and, you know, this is all some kind of a fabrication. So what, what what's the what's the evidence that Jesus is truly risen? And you get down to it, the, uh, the key is change transform lives it shows the lord is alive and through his grace he really changes us and breathes into us that uh, that that risen life and we see that powerfully in the life of uh, saint peter who was featured in the uh, first reading and we see that he's uh, he's out there boldly proclaiming the gospel message that three thousand were baptized that day and came to the faith this is the same saint peter who abandoned jesus at the time of the crucifixion denied knowing him three times, walked away. So what, what has happened in Peter's life to, to bring about this incredible change? It's our risen Lord, the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon him. And the Acts of the Apostles, which we read during the Easter season, it's really the story of the early church. And St. Peter is one of the key players in all that. So we see him out there proclaiming the gospel message boldly and courageously. And we know that he eventually will give his life, will become a martyr, for, for the cause of the gospel, as will most of the other the, the, the apostles and so many disciples. But that, that's really, if you want to get at the core evidence, it's really how he continues to change lives. And he does that even today. And each one of us listening, watching, we know that grace that comes from, from our, our risen Lord. Yeah, on Tuesday of Easter week in the gospel, we encounter another one of Jesus' disciples, Mary Magdalene. And Mary was given a privilege of being one of the first people there at the tomb. And in that particular gospel, she encounters the risen Lord, and she's so overwhelmed, so filled with love, so joyful that Jesus is risen. She gets down on her knees and she wraps her arms around, around Jesus. And uh, Jesus gives her a, a, a little gentle challenge here when he says, uh, uh, Mary, quit clinging to me. And Jesus is going to have uh, something for her to do. Jesus says to her, stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I'm going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and they reported what he had told her. So Jesus gives her the task of carrying that good news to these other disciples. And one of the key things that we see in the Acts of the Apostles is the commission that Jesus has given them to share the good news. And they do, they boldly proclaim that. For you and me, we're also called to evangelize, to share the gospel. And sometimes people say, well, that's for the professionals, it's not for me. But each one of us, through our baptism, we're, we're equipped with the Holy Spirit to share the good news. There's different types of evangelization. Let me just touch on a, on a few of these. And one would be an invitational evangelization. This is something we can all do. It might be knowing someone that we think could benefit from a, from a connection, inviting them to come to Mass with us or to a retreat or some spiritual event, but to do it in a humble, kind manner. I mean, that's evangelization, to invite. There's also a testimonial evangelization. St. Paul was great at this, St. Peter, where they're really witnessing to the Lord in their lives, to other people. It may be where we encounter someone and we can, you know, here's what I was like before, what the Lord did in my life and what, what it's like for me now. And we, we in, in a gentle way, witness to our faith, to someone who we think could really benefit from hearing that. And the Lord can work through that to draw someone close to him. There's also an intellectual evangelization. Some people come to the faith through their heads. They have a lot of questions. It needs to make sense to them. It needs to be coherent. And again, someone like St. Paul, he had, uh, he had great intellectual gifts in sharing the faith and helping people come to faith. And so that might be uh, an area where, where you would be strong at in witnessing to the gospel. And then one last one would be a service evangelization. You think of someone like St. Teresa of Calcutta, Mother Teresa. And we probably can't remember many things she said, but her witness, her service, spoke the gospel. And I think helped many people come to, come to the Lord. 
And some of you have service gifts, and that's how the Lord is going to work through you to share the good news. So as we uh, are in the Easter season, our Lord is risen. He's alive. He's in our lives, and we ask his, him to strengthen us so that we can continue to witness to the good news in a world that desperately needs to hear the gospel message. So may God bless you as an evangelist of the Lord in your own unique way, but for God's purposes. God bless you.